The history of minor league baseball naming goes back to the Civil War. And uh, it was, you know, the Civil War just wrapped up. And during the war, they had these imported German cigars that everybody got accustomed to. And so when the war ended and everybody went back to their hometowns in Wheeling, West Virginia, they became a cigar rolling uh, community. And your mother was rolling cigars, your grandfather, your, you know, the, the, the kids, like everybody was doing that. And to be a cigar rolling community, that was really special to Wheeling, West Virginia. So when baseball came to town and, you know, uh, you were naturally the Wheeling Stogies. And the Wheeling Stogies would play the Grand Rapids Furniture Makers. And that stood as much about baseball as it did about the pride of the industry of each of those towns. So nowadays we look back and we're like, oh, those are like silly, you know, minor league baseball names, the furniture makers or the, the stogies. But that stood for something special to that community. It's, it's, baseball has always been more of a circus. Right. And we're sort of just continuing, we just see ourselves as a continuation but, of that tradition. But, but if I said to you, I have this idea for a team name, right. and it's called the Purple Pants. Right. You'd be like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Cannot name the team the Purple Packs, but right. I said, what about the Red Sox? <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden you're a tough guy. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, we're so that's what we do now. We go to all these small towns all across America. We try to uncover interesting, unusual stories that are unique to that town and that can embody what it means to be from that town. And um, yeah, it's what minor league baseball is all about: is taking the story of all of our great American hometowns and then fusing them into this fun universe that you just want to lose yourself for a night. And that's what's so great about what we do. So when we're coming up with a name, we really, I would say our main three paradigms that we, we use are, is it a fun story? Can we build a universe? So pull pork nachos or can we make it seem like we, we found, stumbled upon some crazy, you know, raccoon space program in the woods of Alabama? <clears throat> That's number one. Number two, is it just fun? Does everyone want to talk about it? Kids going to love it. Are, are people going to be sharing it, you know, around the, the water cooler on, on, on Monday morning? And then <clears throat> number three is heart and, and authenticity. We want to create stuff that lasts a long time. And so you do look to brands like the Mud Hens in minor league baseball and the Bulls in minor league baseball. But we're always trying to find more of those long-term stories, you know? These great sports brands of our time are not just like a logo or like just like a uniform. There's often like, like theme songs or like there's music or there's, um, you know, rituals, traditions, you know, when this happens in this experience, we do this and really thinking deeper about not just like what would be a cool logo or what would sell, but also like um, what would be something that we could create experientially that defines that, uh, that brand right. that transcends logo. Well, because the brand and the name and the logo actually end up becoming an abstraction of people's minds. And it, it's actually like, we like to think of it like a box. And in that box, you put all your memories and all of your habits and all of your relationships that you form with pe you know, people that work there or people that you sit next to or whatever my, it is. I remember my kid's first game. I remember my first game. Or, or maybe there's some local tragedy that happens and everyone rallied around the park. Or, um, you know, or even at the major league level, you see, you know, uh, the Yankees brand. Now, yes, of course it represents like an incredible lineage of winning. But it also represents, you know, um, Babe Ruth and Joe DiMaggio, and when Joe DiMaggio was dating Marilyn Monroe, yeah. and and then it also represents 9/11, and everyone, you know, put a Yankees hat on to, to to sort of rally around what it meant to be from New York, and then it also represents, you know, Spike Lee and Jay Z, and it just it 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 becomes this box that everyone puts their memories in, and and that's what that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to to make the the, the prettiest box.